Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. I am not Sorgatron, I am your pal in the mainstream media, and this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 576, and uh, we've got a a, a cast of thousands here, none of which are named Sorgatron, he's away, so like when dad leaves for the weekend, we're just going to throw a massive kegger and whatever happens, happens. Call the cops, am I right, Mad Mike? Woo! We are calling the police! The fashion police! Very nice, very nice. And uh, sitting next to Mad Mike, uh, representing all women everywhere tonight. Someone Sutters! had to. <laughs> Someone had to do it. <laughs> Zero pressure. Zero pressure. Big at smile. All. Good start. And uh, <laughs> sitting over there next to uh, producer Missy, Chad the Shad. Hello. Good evening. I'm back. <laughs> it's been a few weeks. It's been about a minute. <laughs> Uh, before we go any further, um, let's uh, make sure we take care of some business here that Sorg has told us we must take care of. Uh, first of all, uh, we want to thank... If you uh, left a blue station wagon in the lot, your lights are on. <laughs> uh, license plate? The license plate is seven. 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 Okay, very good. All right, thank you, Basic Sickness, for the intro. Uh, go check them out at basicsickness.com. Um, here's how you connect with the Wrestling Mayhem Show out there, if you're not watching us live right now. WrestlingMayhemShow.com, or you can email us at goodnights at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, or uh, send us a drunk voicemail, 412-206-WMS0, or go to the Twitter, at Mayhem Show, or check us out on Facebook, where plenty of good discussions are going on. Uh, some of them are the controversial variety, but uh, hey, it's all good. Uh, look us up uh, in the video or the audio section on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, wherever fine podcasts are uh, are found. Uh, iTunes comments, welcome, of course. Rate, review, subscribe, the whole deal. Uh, and uh, as you are right now, join us every uh, Tuesday night, live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, and uh, hey, let's uh, give a quick uh, shout out to all of our awesome Patreon subscribers. First of all, uh, those of us at the uh, fan of the show, one dollar level, uh, we've got uh, Bo Diggity, woo, That's right, Ed Burke, uh, the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. I love those guys. Uh, Trey Garcia, Alex Cars, and Bobby F J Town. Thank you for supporting at the one dollar level and at the Pocky Club five dollar level. We've got Tina Keys and Christopher Bishop. Thank you for all of your money. Uh, and go ahead and support us and support the show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show business done now fun let's talk about money in the bank uh carmel's work death destruction (laughs) horror internet crushing twitter anger everything so much i I can't even (laughs) mike something happened on smackdown tonight bring us up to speed um well basically they said our bad uh, we're going to do it again. Words, did those words come out of their mouths? It should have. It should have, but, you know, they're, they're going to do it again next week. Yeah. So, hopefully they can get it right a second time. You're implying that they got it wrong the first time. I am. I am absolutely implying that. Okay. Um, I, I don't have any notes. I only have is about 24 hours of thoughts. <laughs> and I know... <laughs> there have been a lot I, of I know thoughts when I'm around. on an island... And when I'm about to be on the island, and I'm going to say flat out, I thought the ending on Sunday night was fine, and I was fired up, and I thought it was, um, how would I say? It was not inoffensive to me, but I know to others, it was a little bit, um, so um, I feel like maybe we should talk this out, and um, I think we should start with the girl. Uh, Dutters? Okay, first of all, the the fact that you are- You you could have said ladies first. Yeah, that's- that's, (laughs) 
girl. Yeah, this is this is all starting out very bad. <laughs> I, told you, I told you I didn't come prepared, so you're gonna have to just accept that. I mean everything in the nicest way. <laughs> Classic sword. Classic sword. Um, well, I, 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 I yeah, because it's been, it's been a rough 24 hours, and I've seen a few things that I wish I hadn't seen from certain people that made it a little rough, and I had to come to an aid of a few friends, and I will always do that. <laughs> but um, so essentially, the issue me particular with me particular in the match was not. So much the heel ending, which before the man splaining happens, I understand <laughs> that the money in the bank should be won by a heel every single time because you know you have the grand hero in the ring who's champion and they're about dead from a match and you're like, hey, by the way, bing, 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 I get the money in the bank, I'm coming in. That's how it works. Get it, got it. The problem for me was the fact that Carmella did not have the opportunity to climb the ladder herself. It was fine with the heel ending. He could have just knocked Becky off the ladder, stood the ladder back up, let Carmella have her moment. She deserved it. Um, the way they hyped up the particular event was it was a big women's revolution thing. And WWE has a history of doing this, where they're like, yeah, we're women revolution, women wrestling, this is awesome. And they do something stupid that they just like, it just makes you want to just strangle everyone. Okay, um, do you think yeah, WWE <laughs> kind of set themselves up? Yeah. Because you're right, the video package before the match was kind of like, you know, this is going to be a great moment in mm -hmm. women's wrestling history. Mm -hmm. And then I think I'm going to step on Mike's uh, point probably. As somebody who's in marketing, that's the other thing too, was they lost that moment, that footage, that photo, that women's, yeah, look at that. We got her taking down the, the money in the bank for next year, you know, for future. That's another thing. It was like, it, it just was not, they didn't, they shouldn't have hyped it up that way if that was how they're planning on ending it. I guess. You know what I mean? I think that's part of it and and what else? Yeah. I don't want to step all over you. No, <laughs> no, it's fine. Um Yeah, the the point is if WWE hadn't marketed it as such, I wouldn't have a big problem with it. If this was the second women's money in the bank, would not have had a problem with it at all. In fact, I literally said exactly what would happen a couple weeks ago because I know how WWE does yeah. with things of this nature. I said it kind of flippantly. Doesn't mean I like the ending, but it's what I thought would happen. And honestly, Carmella winning still, in my mind, makes the most sense. Yeah, oh my gosh. Because she's the one that needs the most help, with the exception of maybe Tamina. Mm -hmm. But um, there are other ways they could have gone about doing it. And I was having a few discussions with some of my friends offline. Uh, one of them, obviously, what you said, like, Ellsworth could have held Becky's leg while Carmelo climbed. Yeah. Another one, which, and if WWE wanted Ellsworth to do this, like if he's going to get inserted in the storyline somehow, mm -hmm. and they wanted him to grab the briefcase, there's another way they could have done it. They could have had, like, Charlotte put Carmella in the figure four. Mm -hmm. To a point where she was so injured, she couldn't climb the ladder, and she instructed Ellsworth to go up and get the briefcase. And that could have been kind of cool because, like, I know some people were saying that, you know, Ellsworth is her manager. So mm -hmm. it, it'd be the same thing, like, if Lana helped Rusev or when AJ helped mm -hmm. Dolph Ziggler. But Ellsworth did that of his own accord. If Carmella had told him to go up and grab the briefcase because she literally couldn't climb it, that, I think, is a whole different thing entirely. I still think you lose the moment. You lose the moment. Yeah. You lose the moment, but that gets the desired heel reaction that I think they wanted. If it's if it's Carmella, and even if he's like hesitant, he's he like doesn't want to get in the ring because yeah. there's five women in there that will beat the shit out of him with mm -hmm. a ladder. Like, yeah. if he's hesitant about doing it. But the thing is, Ellsworth just fucking ran up like he was part of the match itself. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I'm gonna steal a Larry point because we were talking about it. Um, if this would have happened year two, year three of Women's Money in the Bank, totally cool. But you don't make this like some big triumphant change and a leading women's revolution thing and then have a guy retrieve the Money in the Bank case. It's just... Yeah, it'd be, it'd be like when they had the, the Hell in the Cell with Charlotte and yeah. Sasha. If Flair broke into the cell and hit Sasha in the head of a chair and that's how Charlotte won. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what that would have been like. And everyone would have been like, oh, well, that was kind of unfortunate. Like... Yeah. I'm glad, because I was talking to, like, 
talking to one of my friends, I'm like, I don't know how they fix this apart from just completely redoing the match. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're doing. So Well, and, and let me get back to that because yeah. I I kind of feel like what's in a way, what's done is done. And mm -hmm. for all the damage, I mean, I don't think you can take away from the fact that like WWE did this on purpose to get this reaction. This is what they wanted. Mm -hmm. All the girls after the match went on Twitter and they and they tweeted basically echoed what a lot of what you and Mike are saying that you know this is bad this is not the way this match was supposed to end um so that was the reaction that was the desired response that was the heat the heat um <laughs> yeah but that that's but, like saying Eva Marie got great heat when the heat that Eva Marie got is a different kind of heat like it's well, X-Pac heat X-Pac heat <laughs> um anyway to a point what is it not once we're here talking on Tuesday night uh, what's done is done. Carmella goes out there at the start of SmackDown, knocks it out of the park with her promo. She's got the briefcase. Everyone's mad at her. I mean, legit crowd booing, want to see her get her ass kicked, want to see Ellsworth get her ass kicked. Um, at that point, aren't you now, now, now almost in a situation now where no one is getting anything from this, where at least Carmella was getting something from this, but now there is nothing. Now we're back to square hey. one. And maybe we come back next week and, and, and just Charlotte wins and, and we're hey, off to Carmella it. can but win it next week gonna, fair and square. And maybe she does, but you can't recreate, like you said, I mean, the damage is done. The first time opportunity is gone. Um, would WWE have been better off just sticking with their guns and let's just ride this thing out and oh, just go with no, the heat? No, no, definitely not. Yeah, uh, chat room, we have... Uh, yeah. We have Tina Keys chiming in, and as another woman perspective uh of putting it in here she indicates it was cheapened in a way but she also commented that we do get another money in the bank out of it mm -hmm. so uh smack out in san diego so she, that's yeah i mean be. that should get a good rating that exactly. should get a really good rating mm -hmm. because now everyone like i know a lot of people are, like i heard a lot of people saying you're still talking about it that's what they want yeah. but if you actually read the conversations Half the people are not talking about it in the way you want people to talk about it. Yeah, that's rough. Like, that's, that's pretty much the main point. But bad press is still press. Yeah, press. I'm, yeah, I know. But, like, I still, I kind of commend them for realizing that there are other ways. Because they usually do not do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to laugh my ass off if, if Ellsworth gets that briefcase again. <laughs> Be like, oh, come on. I will laugh my ass off. Because... You can't put that past the WWE to do that. Oh, no, no absolutely. No. But. Because they would do it. See, the only way that you can do that again and it be something effective is if he's the one that has to cash in on the champion. Yeah, make him play. No, no. <laughs> uh, like, that, that's, that I think you, is the only it's, way. It's one of the, if you want in, if you want in so bad to do this, you got to play by those rules then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Billy in the chat room yeah, says... I, oh, oh, I'm you sorry. Got it? Yeah, you I got, got it. it. Now okay. I got it figured out. I'm sorry. Right. Man, podcasting's hard. <laughs> podcasting's hard, you guys. It's okay. He's he's new at this, guys. I'm he's new, new at this. this before. He's new at this. We're We've been so hearing hard. that. Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> Billy in the chat room is saying, uh, next week they're going to have Ellsworth try to get the briefcase, only to be stopped by Becky Lynch. And that sets up what looks like a few weeks ago, Becky versus Ellsworth. Or as I was kind of guessing as after Money in the Bank itself on Sunday night, Maybe it's we're getting towards like Carmella and Ellsworth versus Charlotte and Becky, um, which would hopefully lead to what we all think would be the end game on this, which is Ellsworth getting annihilated by a couple of women, which yeah. is, you know, yeah, kind of I guess what we oh, all. Oh yeah, want. I mean, yeah, there needs to be like an ultimate annihilation, and honestly, he should be taken out before the match. Yeah, that happen. would be fantastic. <laughs> while he, while he's climbing, yeah, I don't know. I think taken out before the match. Like, the entire welcoming committee and Charlotte, like, all of the women unite in, you better they lock him in the dressing room. <laughs> Some crazy things they could be doing. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we could do. And I, I think every precaution must be made to make sure he's not involved in that match at all. I think, um, I think it's going to be interesting next week. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and getting back to the, some of the people I saw online, uh, I mean, I, 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 you know, it's, it's a tough position for me and Mike and Chad mm -hmm. and most wrestling fans with, you know, extra equipment 
who just kind of don't have that same perspective on things. So it's easy hey, for hey. us to stand here and be like, you know, you're getting worked, which is which is an easy uh, I, kind I, of, which I, was I, kind I, of like, my initial reaction. And, and a lot, some of the vitriol on, on, on Twitter and, and social media, I think, maybe went a step too far. Um, but um, yeah, because a lot of the, a lot of the things I heard online were that oh well, women fans don't get the story. I'm like, yeah, they do. They're not dumb. It's just a shit story. Mm -hmm. There's a better way to tell that same story. Yeah, it, I mean, well, they, they were a lot of fans, and, and you saw this too because we were in the same conversation. Were like, well, this is they needed a heel turn or a heel situation like this, something to do this. And I'm like, well, can't this happened at the same time like how are these two things mutually exclusive like we can't have a woman climb the ladder and have this big heel moment like just they could be friends i mean there's there was a way to do it and they just weren't understanding that and i think um i just totally blanked out on a thought i had a thought and it's gone <laughs> this is what I, happens can, can we all agree that like it, maybe wwe wwe doesn't understand that like and maybe this is the lesson learned from this for them is that mm -hmm. the rules are different the rules have changed when it comes to women's wrestling as far as how they present never... it there's a higher standard at least in a lot of the fans' eyes, as far as what's acceptable in some of these matches and what's acceptable in the in the storylines involving the women now. But I mean, if there is a higher standard, it's because of WWE that there's a higher standard. They've been the one that have been pushing this women's revolution for the past two years. Like ever since Charlotte, Becky, and Sasha have been called up, they have been pushing for mm -hmm. that, and they still kind of fumble on the one yard line with a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. Like they still don't quite get like like um i was talking to my friend jen uh she was saying that women will never be viewed as equally as men because they call it the women's division but there's nothing called the men's division like when you see wwe championship and you see wwe women's championship they're unequal it's it's like in more in most normal sports you'll see the wnba championship and the NBA championship. Like, right. Like, I think the point she was trying to make to me, which I completely mis under misunderstood the first time, because I thought she wanted, like, integration, like, intergender matches and stuff like that. Yeah. But no, she just wants, like, WWE men's championship, WWE women's championship. And I think that's a really good place that they could take it so that the divisions seem equal. I mean, not that, um, like, the, the, like with Bailey, Bailey's a good example of this. Bailey was every girl, everywhere. He, she wasn't the blonde with the big boobs, who's you know everybody wants to hook, you know sex with, essentially. With a lot of the divas had been, and a lot of the female wrestlers have been, and then they put in a legitimate what her character is is a legitimate wrestling fan who has had the opportunity to live out her dreams. And look how many, how it much how well that did marketing wise. Mm -hmm. Like you have to if you market correctly to women, they will come. Like they will come to your product. They they're not stupid. It's just yeah. I mean, and and I think if we don't point things out like this, WWE and other companies as a whole will never learn. Yeah, I mean, because if we just sat back and said nothing. Yeah, because I just finished reading AJ's book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she talks a lot about that. Mm -hmm. Like when she was on NXT, like like she was talking about how the guys in the back were telling her that she was the best wrestler. She was probably the best choice to win out of all of them, but guys didn't want to sleep with her. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. First of all, I don't know who they're asking because AJ was a gorgeous woman. Mm -hmm. Not that had not that that should have any bearing one way or the other, but like they need to look at more than just the sexuality and even like because they still haven't learned their lesson. I don't think because today mm -hmm. WWE tweeted out um, just a, because Maria Canellas came back on the pay per view and they just tweeted out a whole thing like don't remember Maria. Here's a ton of really hot pictures of her. I'm like, that's how all about I have, she, though. But, <laughs> no, but she I'd had think. some good moments. Yeah, she had some good moments, like the part where, like, she had some matches. Like she competed in matches, and she yeah, had. She was in a heyday of of a bombardment of that type of media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, really, the fans. That's how you're going to remember her over maybe those good moments or whatnot. But that's the pictures and the the dancing and the, the ditziness. That's what you're going to remember but, from Maria. But it's kind of tone deaf to do it right after this huge. I, backlash. I agree. I agree. Yeah. But if like they don't have any other, they don't have her putting on Matt classics for championships 
anywhere. I mean, I mean, you can't forget who They do have a pretty decent match between her and um, Trish Stratus at WrestleMania. She was, she was, the, the whole story was that she was being trained to be a, a wrestler by Lita. Yeah. Like, I think you mixed that. her up with, um. Oh, Christy uh, Hemme, excuse no, me. Um, no, it was, Chris, it was Christy uh, Hemme. Actually, Masara. No, it, it was, it was Christy Hemme. It was Christy Hemme. I, 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 but, I mean, Maria does have matches that <laughs> yeah. they, even if they're not five-star classics, like, take the best one you have, because, there are good matches so, with every women on the roster we can point to. That's the problem that WWE has anyway, though, is Lita or Trish or any of those. They always show that old yeah. sex stuff. And it's just what they do. I mean, the, I'm the, not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. Or yeah. Like that. Well, I'm saying it's wrong a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't forget who. I mean, the person behind the curtain is not changed. I mean, it, yeah. it's, well, it's, yeah. it's very. And no matter point. how many influences are Still, pressing up against him. Still Granddaddy Mac. Still Granddaddy Mac behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. Can we call him Granddaddy Mac from Grand now Daddy on? Mac. Because that's an amazing... He is a granddaddy, so... Yeah. He really yeah. is. Yeah. I wonder if that was the name of the clock on Raw. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, one of the things I thought would have maybe helped this little... Mm-hmm. Just a little bit. Not <laughs> not gotten it over the hump that it created itself. Was uh, uh, Carmella's reaction to Ellsworth getting the briefcase for her should have been more severe because it sets her back and the division back. Now, instead of just open arms, like, yeah, I get she, she got, that's a nice picture of her with the case. and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Yeah. But, um, afterwards, like there should have been a realization like, Oh buddy. Oh boy. Like that's not a good, that's, you shouldn't be here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like everybody else is pissed off, but Carmela should have had a moment of like, yeah, I'm, I'm a little pissed oh. too because this is this is my spotlight. Mm-hmm. And granted, I have the briefcase, but this is my spotlight. You need to step like you know I think that would have helped it a little bit more as as the female being like, "Hey, listen, buddy, I don't know what you're." He's like a guy at the bar who steps up to you. <laughs> he's like, "Hey, pretty lady, let me buy you a drink." You're like, no, sir, I don't want to drink. Ah, come on, let me buy you a drink. And he buys you one anyway. And you're like, oh, uh, mm-hmm. let me go back to my girlfriend's. And he, he comes in and crashes the table. Hey, that's James Ellsworth. <laughs> you know what they could do next week? They could literally recreate look at the more. whole scenario, but have Carmella pull him off the ladder. Or hit him with the ladder. Well, see, that's redeeming. I think that would, I, it that is. would be excellent. That, I th- that's that's a good way to go. That's a good way to go. Throw him, throw him to the wolves. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yep. the ladies and, are And she can do him. it She's as like, a distraction too. Even if like, she does it in the beginning of the match, like here you go, ladies. Yep. <laughs> like she could throw him. A, she a could throw chicken bone. She could throw him to Becky. Becky can lock on the armor and be so distracted by taking out Ellsworth that she scales up and gets yeah. the briefcase yeah. because still a heel. Yeah, and that that's like. that's yeah. even more like like a Randy Savage, like putting Elizabeth in yeah. front of her, or Miz putting Maurice in front of. Her. Oh, and that I even hope helps they do that. out the first Money in the Bank ladder match. Yes, because yeah. it all yeah. blends together. Yeah, because it's, yeah. it's a callback, it's and it's like, cohesive, okay, we realize our mistake. Yeah, we have co- yeah. we have course corrected. You guys were right. It's fine. We're all good now, and we got the reaction yeah. we want. We're gonna screw it up later. Road dog that <laughs> Wait road, next mistake. road dog that next one's free. V's next great screw balls up coming up with fire. <laughs> road dog, road dog, you can take that one. You can take that. Great CC dog. Mayhem show. All right, um, all right. Let's put a bow on this real quick, and let me just ask. Let's just go around. How do you want to see the Money in the Bank women's match take two and Mike? Um, kind. Now, now that we've just kind of talked yeah, it out, <laughs> kind of like I just said, like Ellsworth goes to do it again, and Carmelo's the one that pulls him off. I think that'd be amazing. That would know, be amazing. We're all sold on that. Dutters. Yeah, we're all yeah. sold on that idea now. <laughs> yeah, yes, that, yeah, that one's free. You, you yeah, have or one. I mean, you could just have it with him not at ringside and all, and just have a straight up match. You yeah. could that that too, but but do, I think there has to be a redeeming quality of Ellsworth getting his getting his coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he needs that kick in the ass mm-hmm. for what he did. And that's like that's a heel move for him too. Like, oh, look what I did to the ladies, and yeah, all the ladies are like. And plus, nope. if you ever, <laughs> no, if, buddy. if you ever wanted to turn Carmella face, that sows the seeds of that too. So yeah. I mean, it's a it's a 
dual ended thing. Like I feel like we might be giving WWE too much credit. Oh, we're giving them <laughs> way too much credit. Because I know they we're didn't giving think them about way this. too much credit. But uh, no, that that would be a, a really solid way to fix yeah. this. Dave Podner in the chat room wants to see Ellsworth in a shark cage. Ooh. Maybe hang, maybe maybe the shark cage hanging and the money in the bank underneath the shark that, cage. That one where he could slip right through the bars. I was gonna say, yeah, that's he's a tiny I'm, man. He has no jaw, no chin. Yeah, <laughs> no chin, very tiny. He, he would very look, tiny. he would look like the the um, the when, senator in the first X Men movie where he yeah. just squeezes through the yeah, bars. Yeah, when he turns sideways, you can't really see him. That's why he has to wear those loud prints, <laughs> so you can see him. All right. Um, Daughters, thanks for coming in and being the voice of all women. Thank you. I'm sorry if I offended you <laughs> no. with my lady. Remarks. I don't lady. know. I don't know why lady. Right. Girl, lady, you. <laughs> thanks for re representing all womanhood. Matt, do I have cooties now? I'm on the same couch with her. That's your problem, not mine. Uh, let me. Is this where I do the slice? Um, I think it's a good time to do the slice. It's a good time to talk about pizza. You know, I love pizza. Mike loves pizza. Chad loves pizza. I love it. Slice on Broadway has it. pizza. It's really good. We um we eat it all the time. I, I was just down at PNC Park on Sunday. I went in the slice on Broadway before the Pirates game. I had a slice or two, garlic knots, a drink, fueled up. Wasn't hungry for the rest of the game. Plenty of fuel. Pirates got three hits. Got their asses kicked by the Cubs. I'm not bitter. Screw you, CM Punk. Anyway, um, slice on Broadway. Delicious pizza. Don't you agree, Mike? Hey, Matt, guess who also had slice on Broadway on Sunday? Who? Who? This guy. Good. Ah, uh, and I... I have to say, I I was a fan of Slice on Broadway before. I've had before in the studio several times. There's a box right here. Mm. If I didn't just have a whole lot of food at Rock Bottom, I'd be having more slices right now. But I've never had Slice on Broadway fresh. And let me tell you, Slice on Broadway fresh is the perfect pizza for podcasting. And I prefer pepperoni. See, I got all the peas in there. The yes. perfect pepperoni. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, I know. Slice on Broadway. You don't have to get pepperoni. SliceonBroadway.com. What's that Twitter pizzas. handle? PGA Slice. PGH underscore Slice. PGH underscore Slice. Get yourself some pizza if you're here in Pittsburgh. And uh, thanks for supporting the show. And we do have a late-breaking comment from Riz. Oh. Can oh. You pull up the Mayhem Show Twitter. Oh, from the Riz. From the Riz. Yes. The Riz are. Furious. Furiously racing Furious off the Twitter. Riz. Uh, first of all, let me uh, l let's welcome Larry to the couch while we. Oh look hey, at Larry. hi. Oh, welcome. you're not Dutters. No, I am not. She. Uh, you're a little shorter and a little hairier. How was 205 live tonight? Hey, you know, it wasn't bad. It was a solid 205. <laughs> so, I'll, not, get, not I'll, get, I'll give it. I'll give it a, a solid 205. Excellent. It didn't carry time. much weight, but. Uh, got <laughs> it was flying all over the place. Um, okay, so. Riz said um, in in our reaction to Carmella, uh, Rich, Carmella's reaction, Riz said she a heel won though, Carmella won. What would she have done? Climb up and hang it back up herself? Yay sportsmanship! Um, I think heels can't be good sports, Mike. I, yeah. You got you got to work that into your. Uh, I love mind everything here. about it, except for when it was done. Yes, like it was the perfect ending. Her promo, like, everything was great if it happened next year. Yep. That was my, yeah. only, that was yeah. the, that was my only problem with it. Right. Or if WWE hadn't built it up as this huge historic thing beforehand. Yeah. Like, but, I mean, it was. I, you have to build it up as that. You've built up every other major yeah. milestone as that. The women's Iron Man match, the Hell in the Cell match. Sure. You know, like, they've built every single... Mm -hmm. Main eventing milestone yeah. for the women's division, up like that. So they had to, and they've gotten most of them right. I mean, I guess there was, you know, the law yeah, of averages yeah. is going to kick in. Well, I mean, the, the Hell in the Cell match that they that may have ended that pay per view was good. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I it mean, wasn't bad. The, the I mean, finish was a little botched, but that's just I, every wrestling. Match. I think my, like, my only problem was, was that they did so well with the Iron Man match that my bar was set really high. Yeah, yeah, because the so, Bailey, the Bailey Sasha takeover Iron Man match. They that they was, they were or. Uh, Sasha and uh, Charlotte, they were doing, yeah. like, killer matches at the time, you know? and Yeah, I mean, and again, probably, this is yeah. this is literally just about the finish, because the match, yeah. I mean, we haven't talked yeah. about the match. The match was great. Oh, yeah. The yeah. match was a shit ton of fun. Yeah. Like, they, they were doing spots, like, the, like, every other ladder match you've ever seen before, and it was just literally a fumble at the goal line. Like, it was that, the last 
what minute 45 seconds not even like yeah not even it was yeah. literally the last 30 seconds yeah because up until um the band was Carmella the field. got power bombed yeah. it was great yeah and the the crowd was into it like huge high spots like they did not hold back with any of the latter stuff like it was tamina was an enforcer for a good yeah. part of the time yeah uh, tamina got the shine she was, really really she well was doing great but yeah it was just a fumble at the goal line, and hopefully they can course correct next week. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. And SmackDown should get whether a bomb-ass rating out of yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, whether or not they do they do good or not, it'll be good. I mean, <laughs> it'll be a good match. I'm not... My expectations are very low. <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe, maybe that was the whole point. <laughs> I don't know. Now we've got the bar nice and low. Now you down. down. Now they have they to did. build you back up. They did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... That, that was not the only thing that happened in wrestling this week. There were other things. There was. Um, perhaps most not- notably is that, um, well, Enzo and Big Cass broke up as a tag team. So um, we brought in Larry as our special uh, friendship expert um, because we want to discuss the fact, at least uh, discuss the fact quite quickly that um, apparently WWE does not believe in friendship or perhaps even love. And uh, every di- tag team, even the ones you cheer for right now and enjoy they're destined to break up in a very ugly way eventually Mm -hmm. um so i mean i I guess i'm just putting it out there and seeing if anyone disagrees with me wwe does not believe in real friendship no vince vince mcmahon's heart is a black hole (laughs) granddaddy matt i bet i bet he gives his grandkids coal for christmas correct me if i'm wrong but it's only june in 2017 and we've had kevin owens and jericho DIY and Enzo and Cass all break up really, really and brutally. And Goldust and our truth and, and Golden Truth. Yeah. Shit. Uh, oh my God. And you know what? And there's probably more. This is also a larger problem because now there's no face tag teams on Raw. Uh, Miz and Maurice. <laughs> Intergender tag team. No, that's why they don't believe in love. Oh, oh! I just have a really great idea. Always trying to break what up Rusev and Lana. I mean, it's just nothing's, nothing's allowed to last. Man. Well, what Rusev if, been on TV what if Ms. and Maurice go to a marriage counselor and that marriage counselor is, is Mike and Maria Kanellis? I thought you were going to ask if it was It'd the doctor li- who got Daniel would, Bryan and Kane no, on the same page. No, it would be like looking into a bizarro <laughs> mirror and it would be fantastic. <laughs> it would be really great. Uh, Chad, friendship, WWE, where are you at? Um, it doesn't happen a lot. It's bad. Uh, even Edge and Christian <laughs> have turned on each other. Um, even Edge and Randy Orton turn on each other. Uh, even Edge turned on anybody. He turns on anybody. I'm surprised <laughs> that they did that because Enzo and Cass are so hot. Yeah. You know, that's it, it, was, it's, it was weird. It wasn't like they were losing momentum and they were stale and needed a so, revamp. So Wait. what happens now for the two? <laughs> well, obviously they have a match. Cass beats the shit out of him. I, and he I goes was going to say, right? to five live. Cass right? is going to be Eric Connell champion by the end of the year. Right? That I'm, And Edzo the two of five live, right? I don't I, know. I don't know what else you could do with him. Otherwise, he's going to be stuck in the same position as Kalisto. I kind of want to see yeah. Enzo yeah. manage someone new. I kind of want to see Enzo man someone. I mean, new. You can get, that that route is available. He could always have his own big God, guy, Strowman. You know, a new friend, go after uh, Leopard Prince Strowman. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Strowman would eat him alive. Oh, it'd be so like just literally, because. like literally, he would just look at him like a piece of jerky. Like. But I guess yeah. Does he get another another big guy to fight Cass? Well, because it also seemed like that's in the, that segment, that's the classic. The like, storyline right there. I, seemed, I do like the idea of Enzo auditioning seven footers to be his new tag team. Partner. Oh yeah, yeah. Big Show's not doing anything um, right now. I'm sure they've got some big planks of wood down in NXT. They can. Uh, that's oh true. yes, yes oh, they do. Yes um, they do. Dylan Miley. Let's call up Dylan Miley and, and put him with Enzo, because I is wanna, he ready? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I want to see the fuck out of a big Casper's <laughs> Dylan Miley match. I want to see the fuck out of that. He'd be good with heavy machinery. Oh, don't, don't, don't make me dream like that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. All oh. right, into the chat room Sorry. we go. Tina Keys oh, has God. a suggestion for Enzo. He could be Kurt Angle's assistant. 
I love it. I love it. Oh I'm my god, okay Tina! In a Tina, suit, or better yet, a a, uh, a throwback team angle sweatshirt. No, sweatsuit? no, a entire leopard themed suit. How about dressed as Uncle Sam? <laughs> leopard uh, Uncle Sam. Leopard Uncle Sam. Leopard Daddy Uncle Sam. Yeah. And uh, Wait, Dave no. Dave Podner points out that uh, friendships never last. Going back all the way to the barber shop. That's I mean, this, this always happens. I mean, every uh, li- I'm not joking when I say that every tag team you're looking at in WWE right now is destined to break up in an ugly way. The Usos are going to break up oh. in a bad way. Don't think it's not going to happen. The Bella Twins broke up. All right, that, they're twins. It's going to happen. That's why it's day one ish because they're still not sure about <laughs> it. Yeah. I thought it was Unless H. you're the bar. No, no, that, that's the fashion police. That's if easy you're easy if you're the bar. You went the opposite way, and you beat the shit out of each other, hey, and then became tag team. Hey, you know, Chad, every bar has a closing time. Open all they're the doors just, and... They're just going to ride off into the sunset. Head into the world. <laughs> now here's Wonderwall. Wait, there's, there's, there's this guy named Mike Sorg, or Michael Sorg in the chat. Who the oh, fuck hi, Mike, is he? How are you? Walk him. Welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem <laughs> Show, Michael. First time, long time? Maggle. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, welcome to the resume show, Michael. Michael Sorg wants uh, them to hire Brian Cage for Enzo's new uh, charge. He would eat Enzo. Is I'm Cage, old, is, is Cage time, big enough for this ride? <laughs> um, also, Tina Keys. Tina, um, I'm g- I know it's early. I'm going to give you MVP of the chat room. Um, Tina Keys has finally settled a great debate. That has lasted for nigh over a decade. Probably 20 years. The G in GTV stands for Graves. Yeah, he started when he was four years old. Stands for Graves. (laughs) Tina, bravo. I want to see what happens to Corey Graves in this. Do you think there's another... I think, you think there's another shoe to drop in this whole thing because Angle so. said this, the, that, this just, that this text thing was going to destroy him, and I don't think Enzo beating up or, or Cass that beating up it. Enzo that's not destroying no. Angle, right? He's at the center of a lot of controversy. I like seeing Corey Graves step out. I bet, I bet, yeah. I bet a doctor's going to clear him. I got a feeling. Oh no! I'll, it, if Daniel Bryan doesn't get cleared, Corey Graves isn't going to get cleared. What'd you do? Stand by. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Hold on. Got it. What happened? We're good. Get the sledgehammer. What is happening? <laughs> Just hit it. Just break it. <laughs> break this wall. Step on it. Make it stop. Kill it. <laughs> Kill it with fire. <laughs> Dead. I'm going to ruin it. Damn it. Podcasting's hard, guys. <laughs> Say 90s things in your headset. If only Sorg were here. <laughs> oh, uh, that, that Michael Sorg. Says hello, first time, long time. Coming from Nebraska, where wrestling doesn't exist. <laughs> well, long time podcaster, first time well, listener. Uh, welcome, fellow Cornhusker. <laughs> that, that, that that's that's Nebraska, right? The Cornhuskers. Yeah, 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 yeah you got it. Okay, Good job. aces, yeah. aces. But yeah, Corey Graves, he's the best thing going on wrestling right now. Wow, he's, a lot. He's, I, I'm gonna say that. Wow, like, he's yeah. Tina Keys jumped in and said, and still hoping that Corey's going to be the. Uh, Turn out to be the puppet master who's pulling the strings on Big Cass, which I think is and I, that could be good, because because I'm telling you, Gravy could play that like evil, you know, Graves is things in your head. Yeah, must It's, it's, like, it's uh, nice to see him do something. I mean, his his commentary is top notch. He's got it. Yeah. Um, but he, there is more to him, and you know, unfortunately, the injury took his wrestling away from him. But it's nice to see him step into that type of role. Where he, he has still take semi bumps, right? Like when Jr. got his ass kicked. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Think I, I so. just don't know. I mean, like the last time anyone got, I, I, or, he took a bump when uh, in NXT he took a bump for uh, somebody got thrown into him. What a, happened there? Was it Do you remember this, Mike? But, I mean, was his a neck he had injury? Concussions, right? No, he he had concussions. Like I think he's like Daniel Bryan. So so he, level. Well, I guess he can't take a boot to the face, but. No, you wouldn't want that. No, I, I don't. Think Which makes it. You can put him in a figure four. Or you could have him being attacked backstage. Yeah. You could yeah. do that. I mean, like, yeah. someone doesn't like him snooping around or something like that. They take him out before Raw starts. I could see that. Yeah. But, and, and, but as far as, like, the traditional, like, Bobby Heenan role, like, it's difficult because, like, all Bobby Heenan was leading up to 
the face oh, just yeah. beating the crap out of Bobby Heenan and then flying over the top rope or something like that. And I don't know if Graves can ever, can be doing that on a night to night I just basis. feel like he's going to have a Paul Heyman run. Like when Paul Heyman was announcing and then ECW comes out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know? Yeah. He gives up the announcing. Yeah. I hope he doesn't give up announcing. Well, I, I don't like, think he up announcing. Yeah, like... like because like, honestly, Corey Graves is one of the only saving graces for me as far as WWE's announcing. Hey, David Otunga can come back. David Otunga's never coming back. What? Big, no, that movie that he's filming. David did you know David? Did you know David Otunga's filming a movie? He was filming a movie. He's filming a movie. What? But that movie, what? what they haven't told us, it's the never-ending story. So the filming never ends. Good. Yeah. Well, no, because then we get Booker T. Like I'm okay with that. So no, I'm not. I'm, not, I'm no. okay with I, I did. I want to give props okay to Booker T Booker during T. the Miz TV segment. I mentioned this last night on the Raw recap, but, like, Graves is going on and on about, like, oh, the Miz and Maurice, their marriage is over. What will they do? And Booker T just chimes in with, like, yo, man, just just upgrade the diamond. She'll be all right in the morning. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> sound advice from the book. Sound, right. sound advice right. model right. for all married couples. <laughs> Queen Charmel knows what's going on. Queen Charmel knows what's going on. I have a feeling on, Queen right. Charmel's gotten an upgrade or two over the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> yeah. Why do you yeah. think he's a <laughs> Yeah. But, like, I, I kind of want to have a moratorium on any former wrestlers announcing over the age of 45. I don't think I don't think they should be allowed. Depends. Well, we're, we're, we're down to, like, the last one, so we'll see if we can get Well, no, JBL. JBL. Yeah, exactly. We're down to the last one. And Booker. You know, I was okay uh, with JBL announcing really last Booker. week, or I guess this past weekend. Because he was, he we were talking about it earlier. He does his announcing for SmackDown, and he does his his commentating for that show that he does on Mondays with the oh uh, the bringing to the table thing. Yeah, that yeah. guy. And they're two different like styles. When he's talking to the bringing to the table guy, he's a lot more tolerable than when he's on well, SmackDown in character. Yeah, I mean, because that's basically a podcast, and JBL's podcast show. Was actually pretty decent. So, the yeah, Legends I, of JBL that was pretty decent. If, if he was on SmackDown just being JBL and not playing a character like kind of the way Corey Graves does, only bad. Yeah. Um, it, it'd be better. I'd like yeah. It better. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. All right. One more from Tina here. Sorry about that. Uh, Chad, I'll let you go. Um, you Tina says you still have to prime <laughs> Vic Joseph, who is really good as a heel from uh, his uh, prime wrestling days, apparently. Uh, Mike Rome and Nigel also can step in uh, when they're ready. You do have my, Nigel on deck. Um, and I'm not sure how much we believe in uh, Mike Rome or <laughs> I'm or Vic Joseph, back. but hey, we'll see, right? He's I'm still, I'm still a little worried about Nigel. Ni- Nigel, oh. He's going across the pond pretty soon, too. He's got yeah. he's gotten better. but He has know? gotten better. He doesn't think he's in Ring of Honor anymore, which is a plus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, a plus. Oh, this gra- this gra- this bloke's gonna do gray hair in Ring of Honor. Like, mm. he said that. Ooh. yeah, Ooh. he said that on NXT Takeover. Oh. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Who did you say that about Alistair Black? Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah, he would do good in Ring of Honor. Also, well, also <laughs> speaking speaking of last night, Mike, uh, we got to see the revival. We go on all day, all night. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Nice to see them. Back How nice there. was it to see them? Oh, I love just them. standing Rival. there. We got to see American oh. Alpha tonight. One one thing I did notice about the Enzo and Cass segment, did it seem like Big, Big Show was leaving Raw? It did. Yes. Because he said, "Yeah, he you, said, you don't appreciate like, me around here." Do you think I'm it's out of here. just Enzo convincing Big Show to come back, and we get Show versus I, Cass? I don't think so. And Show puts him over like a million bucks. Big Show just did a podcast with Chris Jericho, mm-hmm. and he was bitching about how much he hates TV. Like, he, yeah, he, but he Cass can take it. Cass can take him off TV. Well, like he, what's he, he comes, gonna do with Enzo? Then, I, I then, think I think Enzo needs to take his beating like a man. Well, see, here, here's what I, I, I just said this after we did the segment about women's wrestling. But, but, I, but like, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking ahead. Yeah. Because if you want Enzo versus Cass, you want that on a bigger stage. You want that in a stage where Enzo is going to get the biggest fucking pop in the world. Like in New York. Oh, where he's from. You know, it's it's funny you mention that, Larry. Yeah. WWE actually has a rather large pay per view coming large. up in August. In your house. It's like, it's like the second largest. Pay-per-view. In your house, SummerSlam. <laughs> yes. No, but like you can have Cass versus Big Show at Great Balls of Fire. <laughs> you, well, I mean, 
Uh, I mean, you said it wrong. Great balls of fire. Okay, you can yeah, have emphasis Caster's... on the balls. <laughs> you can have Caster's big shot. Great balls of fire. And then you could have Cass take him out. And Enzo's be... and and excuse me, I'm, I'm gonna slip into my Enzo voice like, "Hey man, you know what? Uh, big Show didn't work out. I guess, I guess I gotta step up. I gotta take out Cass like a man, huh? Gotta take it. Out... Oh man, I don't think I can take out Cass. <laughs> but you know what? Big Cass, me and you, me and you, big man, seven foot, summer slam." Summer slam me and you, big ass. You're going down, and I only got one word to describe you, Cass. S A W F T. Soft. And then he gets killed. That that sounds about right. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a Brook, Brooklyn brawl, though. Okay. It's going to be the match. Yeah. Oh, I already know who the yeah. special ref will be. Okay. Uh, <laughs> did, I, did I beat you to it? Okay. No, what were you going to say? I, I know who the special ref is going to be. Oh, no, no. I was thinking that. Give me this microphone. Uh oh. I was thinking that I actually kind of disagree with that. That we're gonna have an underdog completely like, holy crap! I just did this. I just beat Cass. Uh. Oh, you're you're thinking like one, two, three, kid and Razor. Yep. Okay. That's I'm down bad. for that That's too. Bad. That's a good finish. Though. I'm down for that and too. So just beat Cass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know what? The best thing is, Enzo can get that win like a flash pin, and Cass can just beat the shit up, beat him up afterwards. Yeah. He's an even bigger heel then. Exactly. Like Brock yeah. Lesnar and Zach Gallon. Oh. Oh, oh, it's one legged cool. man in an ass kicking contest. All right. That was um, so man. good. Yeah. Well, on that note, so um, I feel like, uh, <laughs> yes, I, my trusty producer is wrapping us up and sending us the break. We're going to be right back with the big question and something very special planned for all of you the first ever Sorgabration. You'll see what it's all about right after this little timeout. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm not Sorgatron. Sorgatron is being kept in a secure and undisclosed location. He's in Nebraska. He's not very secure. And uh, over there is uh, Bad Mike. We're joined on the couch also by Larry. What's up? Jettishad. Hello. And it is time for the big question. Um seems to be that a lot of people are thinking that Asuka's reign as NXT Women's Champion is near to an end. So a very simple big question for everyone. Who going to beat Asuka? All right. Who, who, who wants to go first? I ain't doing it. All right. Well, I'm... This isn't my guess. It's more of a hope. I'm saying Nikki Cross. I'm saying Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross is... In my opinion, the only women, the only woman on the NXT roster, who has enough character development and sufficient wrestling skill to realistically be able to take Oscar out, and I really hope that happens before Takeover, so we can get a Boss uh, Nikki Storm versus Ruby Riot match at Brooklyn. That's that's my hope. Larry. I agree with that. That's the safe choice. I'm not going to say that, though. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with... Um, what the hell's her name? Liv Morgan. Ooh, there you go. Okay. YOLO. You only live once. All the hashtags for That's Liv her Morgan. catchphrase, not mine. <laughs> it says it on your uh, tights. Chad, it's you got a thought? It's her Twitter handle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I believe she vacates the title. She will not be beaten. See, wow. that's the best answer. Ooh. I like that answer. Wow. That's okay. what I want to see happen. I want to see her leave undefeated and hit the main roster. And lose an to Maria Kanellis. juggernaut. Huh. Ooh. Yeah. Whatever that... happens when she gets to the main roster happens. But everyone everyone who comes up from NXT has to go through this car wash where they get built up, built up, built up, built up. But then they have to lose not only once, they got to lose the rematch. That's and true. then they go in. They're damaged goods. That's true. Good point. That would that would be really interesting, because then you'd have someone who's completely undefeated in her career. It it'd be like if Goldberg left while WCW while he was world champion and jumped over. Yeah, that I oh, that'd just be really think she's she gets to a point where she's just like there is nothing more for me down here. I'm undefeated. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna top. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Here, take your belt. Wow. I'd like to see her just like screaming, I am tired of wrestling! All of these terrible developmental chicks! And I'm going up to the main roster to kill more women! 
<laughs> that should be what she says. Again, I, I'm doing this on, right after we did that by, two seconds By the way, ago, Matt. She, she did wrestle with Mickey James. Matt, spot on Ashka impression. Spot <laughs> Thank you. on. She was in the studio just now. <laughs> I, I felt like there was a masked woman staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> she this did already beat mess. Mickey James. She has a win over Mickey James already. It's true. All right, and, she, at, and she has wins over Bailey. Yeah. I'm looking at the chat room real quick, and Dave Podner did get the joke from earlier. And he did, did answer Canyon. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Who going to be? Who better? Who better than Oscar? Who better than Oscar? Oh, Billy Johnson also had a little comment in there. Positively Oscar. <laughs> He's under. <laughs> Billy, re- for me. Billy Johnson says the returning Ember Moon. Ah. Which I think is the safe bet. She but could pick it up in a tournament after she vacates it. She could pick it up in the May Young class. <gasps> oh, shit. Oh, the light bulb just went off. Yes, it did. Chad could be exactly right. She can vacate it, and then the winner of the May Young Invitational becomes the new NXT Women's Champion. That is... That's that perfect. would be real interesting to have. That's if she were to perfect. enter and win. <laughs> because... You're taking all Actually, these, wait, all Oscar, these. Wait, okay. You're taking all oh, these other ladies. She vacates it just to have <laughs> fresh meat. Goes through everyone again. Goes it's like everyone. psych, bitches. She comes back to the truck. I changed my mind. Here, hold my belt, <laughs> Mister Regal. I'll be right back. Got this trophy now. I'm have my belt back. No, I'm gonna but, main roster. Oh, vacating it right before the May Young to make her eligible for a tournament. Well, the only thing I don't think that works out timing wise, though. Because I think that tournament starts taping in July and takeovers in August. But then, actually, the live, the live, the finals will be live. So yeah. that would be amazing. That uh, that would be just, really really good. She doesn't have to wrestle on takeover. She could vacate it, go to the there, tournament. She's got to wrestle have, on takeover. They could have their own new tournament or number yeah. one contender. See who gets the title over Battle Royal something or other at TakeOver. That will, that could be really interesting. No, they won't do that. But. No, they won't. Again, <laughs> we give WWE way too much credit. 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 <laughs> also, we, give, down too we, much give, <laughs> we give them way too much credit, oh, especially with, handle, with how they handle their uh, women. Swaskily white us. <laughs> <laughs> too much credit. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking about a Dean Ambrose Bugs Bunny comparison I heard earlier. We'll come we ate him. <laughs> but yeah, no, we give them way too much credit. But yeah. that would be a really cool way for Asuka to leave her on her own terms. Yeah. And I like the fresh meat thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any good competitors. I'll just go join this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Your first match, Britt Baker. Oh. oh. Sorry, Britt Baker. Yeah. She's got experience getting you. squashed by <laughs> WWE guys anyways. Um, oh, dun, dun, Matt, how about you? Who, who do you think it's going to be? I, I like Chad's idea, but uh, I'm going to left field. Did you see that uh, promo they were just running for that Sonya Deville? Mm-hmm. Debut. Beat Asuka. Oh. I mean, if you're going to do it, do well, it like that. All these other girls. I know. mean, it's not technically her debut. Well, you it, know, it, it like, is a debut, but it's Yeah, not. but everyone in NXT has like three debuts. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. That's the soft Hit the debut ground running. And- I mean, I like Nikki Cross. And I, 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 I get, you know, she's probably the most credible threat, but... Um, what, about, what about Ronda Rousey? You need you need that... <laughs> she's retired. That would be interesting. Oh. She's retired. Yeah, from from fake fighting. And we're not talking <laughs> NXT. <laughs> fake stuff. Yeah, seriously. I'm uh, more excited about uh, Ronda Rousey versus Asuka than I'd be about Connor versus... Money May. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'd rather see Conor McGregor versus Big Show, honestly. <laughs> we got that already. Um, so, um, it, yeah, if you want to uh, send us your answer, just uh, add us on uh, Twitter at Mayhem Show or uh, hit us up on, uh, what's that, uh, hashtag? Uh, hashtag? Hashtag Big the, Question. Hashtag WMS Big Question. Hashtag the WMS Big Question. Let us know who you think, who better than Asuka, who's going to beat Asuka, because apparently it's going to happen, even though but, my eyes will not believe it when I actually see it. It'll be more shocking than The Undertaker's. It's undefeated no one, streak ending. No one's even really come close. Oh, that up. Oh. Like, <laughs> in that spot. in that fail four way when Peyton Royce and Lit, when Peyton Royce and Billy Kay teamed up, they that's, could they probably could have done it. Yeah, that's about like 
for the most part, she's beaten everybody pretty handily. Yeah. One on one, no one's been able to touch us. No. Ember Moon almost did. Almost yeah. did. Yeah, Ember Moon's she, been the closest. She had to cheat to win. That's yeah. true. That's why Ember Moon's probably the safe bet. But her but character is not that. It's, oh, her character's she's, just awful. Yeah, I did. I forgot about that. That was the heel move from yeah. Oscar. She's evil now, haven't you heard? <laughs> that's, I don't care. That's what I've heard. Is she still evil. kicking ass? Yeah, okay. She yeah, she's like Braun Strowman bad. Should we talk That's about That's a Braun good comparison. Strowman? She is the Braun Strowman of the women. She's supposed to be evil, but it's just like, no, I'm good. She's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Can we can we talk about Braun Strowman and his entire face return? Like, that was a face moment. Him just coming out in the ambulance. Like, heels don't get that. I'm sorry, they don't. <laughs> I'm pretty like, sure Dean Ambrose did the exact same entrance at one point. He's only going to back his ambulance up. I'm going to get out <laughs> and go to the ring. Well, he's not finished with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not finished yet. Uh, did they swerve us with this injury? No, I don't think so. Yeah, they no, they, they showed the, they, they, they gave an exaggerated timetable for his injury. Yes. Oh yeah, oh, exaggerated, exaggerated, exaggerated yeah. timetable. They, they saw the showed, surgery. They sh- and everything. Yeah, there they, were photos of his arm open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his surgery was <laughs> real, but I, I think the uh, <laughs> wasn't fake. the timetable yeah. was the timetable was probably a little the timetable was probably worst case scenario. Yeah, that's my bet because like. Real worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah, like he recovered almost, fast. Almost every wrestler, like except unless you're that Seth was like a Rollins. Cena recovery. That was cool. unless you're Seth Rollins or Finn Balor. Like it's yeah. a, it's about he short. recovered real fast. They though. did video. They, there was like a video like behind the scenes of it though, and I thought they were saying like three to four weeks. Mm-hmm. Still, impressive. So, I mean, it was, it's been it's been that. Yeah, it's been a month. So, how do you guys think this impacts SummerSlam? Because I. God, like, I don't want to see Roman Reigns in another main event. I don't either. Like, no, I don't either. Unless it's a triple threat. If no. It's, well, no. Roman, Braun, Brock, triple threat. That's going to be a real good match. What if it's but what about Joe? Joe? Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> well, I mean seriously. I mean, they, they have not been not. playing Joe off like I, he's a nobody. I, Joe won that match for Great Balls of Fire just to lose. What if Joe wins? But the, but the thing is, if Joe, changed, changed, if yeah, if Joe wins, I will completely apologize for everything I've said <laughs> about the booking of Samoa Joe. And that's a shoot. But he's not winning. Like, if Joe wins, I will be extremely ecstatic. I will be fucking thrilled. I think it's going to be a disqualification win. As a Brock Lesnar Ooh. fan, I, I would be very pleased if Joe were to win. Yeah. But I'm also a huge Brock Lesnar fan, so I'm okay with him just keeping the title. <laughs> I, I showing don't up think, four I times a year, Joe's I don't care. Flat, Whatever don't, you want to do. <laughs> I, I don't think Joe is going to flat out beat Brock Lesnar, but do you think that he's performed well enough in this feud that you think he's earned himself a spot in a hypothetical four-way match in the main oh, event absolutely. at SummerSlam? He, he, I think he's earned a one-on-one match at SummerSlam. This, this match should be happening at SummerSlam, not Great Balls of Fire. I mean, I, I'm okay with... Joe getting in a four way, I just don't think it's going to occur. Like personally, I don't think that's how it's supposed. I don't think that's I, how it's going to go. I just don't want to see Roman. Yeah, I let, I, I don't. I'm I've sorry, said I've said this before, and I will just, say I it every week till it happens. I want every member of the Shield to go away for six months. That's not long enough. No, no, six months. I think is fine. Well, it's not. Uh, they all come back in the Rumble. I I thought the <laughs> the Shield should be revolving members. The Shield should be itself. And then these three new guys pick up the mantle of the shield, and then eventually they go their way, and the shield uh, just goes I away. I think we have that. Fades back in. But they Ms. should be called the shield. Ms. Bo Dallas, Curtis Axel. There are no hounds. The I'll just die if they come out dressed as the shield one week. The whole entrance through the crowd and the whole deal. There are no the hounds. The freaking bear suits wearing Kevlar. <laughs> <laughs> Kevlar bears. Kevlar bears. The you, bears of justice. Oh, yes. They're, they're the next. snap your ass up in a bear trap. Police. <laughs> it's those, a trap. Those suits a are bear over. trap. Those bear suits are over. Yeah, the bear, uh, suit, the bear suits are amazing. They have their own entrance. They do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they do. <laughs> they took time to pay somebody to make an entrance for those bear costumes. Goddamn Roman Reigns. <laughs> Where, how do we get back to that? that? Damn Roman Reigns! Don't you just love those bears? Goddamn Roman oh, Reigns! Oh, goddamn Roman Reigns! Why? Why? Okay, 
Um, moving on, um, we want to take a minute here and, uh, and acknowledge the person who's not here. Um, Sorgatron has been occupying this seat uninterrupted for 577? Check your notes. What episode are we on? Check your notes. Damn it. And see this Producer one. Producer help. 576. 576. So 575 episodes. 575 episodes, right? Uninterrupted. He's never missed a show, right? Hey, hey, that's not true. I've ho- Riz and I have hosted. You oh, have. really? Riz wow. and I have hosted. So it's not unprecedented. You have. It's, it's not unprecedented. But it's- in studio, there has been no one. No Basically, one. you are ruining Sorg's ass groove. You are with, with <laughs> Say your, that, Batista. Think about that for a quick. Oh my God! This is that's like the first. No one gets. Yeah, that this joke. is the first time someone sat in Sheldon's spot. That's that's what's going on here. Like, did you did you use the same chair, Matt? I'm sitting on Batista's face. Yeah, I'm God, sitting right here. Yeah. Sorg is. Go- it is going to be already Sorg, getting. we apologize for how your ass feels next week. It's going to feel all wrong. My skinny ass ain't going to make a dent in this thing. Um, anyway, we thought it'd be nice to um, kind of give a salute to our uh, to the godfather of the Mayhem show, Prince Podcast himself, the the modern day Mayhem Raja. Uh, Missy Sorg. Sorg himself. Missy <laughs> Sorg. Missy Sorg. Producer Missy. For she's a jolly good fella. For she's a jolly good fella. <laughs> Not appearing on camera. She doesn't need to be. She's omnipresent. She works behind the scenes. To make on-camera stuff look good. And we yes. thank her for it immensely. Yes. She's the sorg of the show. Yes. She's the one yelling <laughs> in my headset. <laughs> Hashtag sorg of the sorg show. Of the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, would anyone like to say something nice about sorg now that he's not here? Um, I, <laughs> pass. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. No, uh, um, I will say, if it wasn't for sorg... And for, I'll, I'll throw Chad and Dave in this too. If it wasn't for all of you guys being so welcoming, I would have never been to the city of Pittsburgh. And for that, I'm extremely grateful because this has helped me through a lot of really bad shit. So thank you very much, Sorg. Finger hearts. Larry, pass. Thumbs up. <laughs> Top like, you're not gonna beat my shit. Yeah, we're not gonna beat my shit. Sorg invited me into Thanks. his home. <laughs> I was uh, joking. Many, many of his homes. <laughs> uh, I think two of them. Um, but uh, I, I've been here. Uh, no, you, that's a three, three, three homes. Yeah. No, no, no it, was, it has been two. Sorry. Well, it's a good. Sorg home. Yes. Um, but no, Sorg has done a lot as as opening. His arms to me, so that uh, you know I could sit on his front porch and wait for wait for the podcast here, or uh, you know, uh, screaming with Steam Machine and Will and Lunchbox. There, uh, we've come a long way, and uh, without Sorg being so uh, welcoming and helpful with everything, and allowing us to do this in our own quirky ways with McMitches and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> Uh, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be 576 episodes. So it's all built on the back of Sorg. This is a, a big colossus. Would you say this is the house that Sorg built alone by himself with no help? Oh. <laughs> oh. And now oh. and now I finally see the look that Missy gives Sorg every week. It's not Sorg. It's, it's the seat. It's well, the we seat. Know. Batista. She, she Batista. produced the blueprints, Batista though. Is, Batista is poisoning the ass of Matt Carlin. <laughs> Making him spew bullshit. Give me my spotlight. <laughs> Give me my spotlight. Oh, yeah, it's totally Batista, right? Right here, right it's the Batista Give spotlight. me my spotlight. I quit. I'm going to do Guardians of the Galaxy and make billions of dollars, fuckos. And I'm taking Titus O'Neil with me. <laughs> and David right, Otunga. Did you hear he's doing a movie? How do I get this wheelchair out of the ring? Uh, <laughs> Give me my spotlight. Uh, Sorgi, I, I can't believe that um, I randomly found this podcast all those years ago by accident without even knowing that it originated here in Pittsburgh. And look what's come of this. All these nice people I've met and all the fun people in wrestling that I've met. And the best is yet to come. So, Sorgi, have fun in Nebraska. And uh, we <laughs> hope you no get sense. back soon. He's not in Nebraska. He's anyway, never coming back. He's not coming back. He's on the other side of the brick wall. This, this, is, a, this is a reboot. 
This is your new normal. <laughs> Deal with it, internet. This was filmed three months ago. There will be a Viking funeral. <laughs> this was filmed three months ago. <laughs> Are we WWE Just like Lucha Underground? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there will be a Sorg Viking funeral. <laughs> Viking Stay tuned. Funeral. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right, time to go home. Mad Mike, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, God. I learned that... What didn't you learn? <laughs> Ooh, I learned that there, oh, there, there's an underbelly to, the, to, the, to this wrestling community of ours. And I want to feel like maybe we should all try to understand each other a little bit more. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, listen. Listen a little bit more. And not everyone's always right. And sometimes no one's right. But usually, WWE's wrong. That's what I The constant. No, that's a good lesson. WWE is that's wrong. That's definitely the takeaway from this yes. week. <laughs> Larry? What's Larry? This week? It's a great week for women. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, terrible uh, week for women. That was terrible. Terrible. Uh, no. <laughs> This is, this is, I, I learned We're just not going to get uh, out of this, fr- aren't we? Friendships never last. It's true. <laughs> true. true. We wow. all said to each other, wow. we just wow. talked about how, wow, wow, wow. wow. Can't believe we all came together, but Bye, guys. this is <laughs> wrestling. We're destined to break up. But it's just like, all right, who's turning on who first? Damn it. Oh, I knew it was going to be Larry. <laughs> well, you know, first in, last out. He'll turn Larry. <laughs> He'll turn. Right. There's a reason we call him the mutilator. <laughs> Chad? Oh, uh, wow. What did I learn this week? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, did you learn right. anything about Edge? No. <laughs> I Wait, learned no, something that's, about Edge. That's a lie. I did learn something about Edge. <laughs> um, him and, him and, and Beth Phoenix... Uh, donated a lot of time to one of our local uh, a local thing. It was, <laughs> I didn't read it. <laughs> I just read the headline. They donated. They're very thank. This group was very thankful to them because they donated. Oops, they donated a lot of time and stuff, and and that's what Edge does now. Him and him and Beth Phoenix. They're just like. Do, do, does he donate spears? He may. <laughs> Concertos all around at the music school. Um, I, I, other than that, I don't. Uh, what did I learn this week? I, I don't know. I learned. I learned to <laughs> just just let things just let them be. <laughs> if something happens, just kind of let it cool down for a day or so. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should just, if, 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 the, if the heat's I, on, maybe no, you should just you like stop talking. For I a learned bit, that maybe, I'm you know? a I'm a I'm. They have that, yeah, that white privilege that they always talk about on the internet. Well, this is wrestling privilege, and maybe as a male, I should just step back every once in a while <laughs> and not say like, "Oh well," and come in and mansplain stuff. Uh, I learned that some people really look bad this <laughs> this week. So maybe uh, wrestling's for boys and girls. <laughs> Women can yes. do things now. Yes. <laughs> Ladies are doing stuff. <laughs> I was quoting Anchorman. Just, just that's what I was trying to do yeah, too. I, I, Somehow we yeah. came up with different yes. quotes. That's all. It's okay. It's fine. Figure that out later. Um, I learned that there are no wrestlers from Dayton, Ohio. That's, right. that's right. why they had to use <laughs> Chad Game. You forgot about Missy. <laughs> I'm saving her for the last. Oh, okay. Main event. Missy, Sa- save the best for last. <laughs> even, even though I look like Chad the Shad. Um, Sorry. Shad. I learned match up her words Move with your, your mouth. mouth. I learned that Sorg. May never, ever, ever trust us again in studio without him. Everything went fine, didn't it? It did. I hit, per- I hit pressed record. Which is, which is why he may never trust us again, because it went so smoothly <laughs> without him. We haven't listened to this we back. He it. might have not. He might have like clicked the record button twice. No, it's good. It's good. It's going. <laughs> it's, it's, it's still red over there, so it's okay. good. Although I do Shad's see something, still moving his I mouth. do see something that we missed. What did we forget? Oh my god! We forgot the separate audio. Ah, oh, it's too bad. <laughs> because the audacity is not in the background doing little sound wavy things. Ah, uh, those were not in the pre-flight instructions. <laughs> too bad. Oh man, um, that's classic suck. Sorg. Sorg did not tell you that because like, he was just like, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna let them screw up this uh this podcast. Sorg, I, I learned that Sorg set us up for failure. <laughs> not my baby, not my problem. <laughs> you telling me Sorg's <laughs> never forgotten to do that? Never. He does it every time. Except for when it, except for when it goes down. Except for when it goes down. What went down tonight, Sorg? <laughs> It's always went going down, down for the ten count. Didn't mm-hmm. get right. Didn't get back up. Anybody in the chat room? I need to. Uh, Billy, thank you. Best show ever. He said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, we aim to please. We aim to we please. We aims to please. We yes. aims to please. It's because of our producer, really. Yes, really. She put the together sor- a great show today. The sorg of the show. Great show. The sorg of the show. <laughs> we would be nothing without her. We would be lost. May yes. and there wouldn't be a show. Mainly because we would not be able to get into the house. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we proved Neither. tonight that while we can do the show without Sorg, we can't do the show without you. If you weren't here, <laughs> we'd be screwed. Who didn't know what mm-hmm. to do? Them's the so, facts. Give yep. yourself a round of applause. Yay! Yay a, a. a plus. Them's the facts. Mm-hmm. Let's hear it. Give it up. Um, wife give it up show. one <laughs> time, <laughs> Daddy! Two claps for producer Missy. <laughs> All right. Good job. Med Mike! Yes. At MedMike4883. That's what I've been told. On the Twitter. <laughs> You're out of here. Back to Poughkeepsie with you. You've extended, you overstayed your I'm, welcome. I'm not leaving till the morning. <laughs> no, you're being evicted now. Bye bye. Okay. All right. Thanks for visiting. Right. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh loves you. Let's go, Pens. See you next Pittsburgh year. Doesn't. Let's go, Pens. <laughs> Larry. Let's go, Pens. Yes, sir. At Mutilator, Larry. Am I? Yes. Thanks for sitting on the couch. Dutters, no longer here. Thank you, Dutters, for coming and being our female. Setting us straight. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Re- representing all womenhood. Chad mm. the Shad, at Chad the Shad. Yes. You're welcome. Yep. <laughs> Producer Missy, wife of the show. Yes. Over there. Hi. Thank you, Missy. <laughs> I'm your pal in the mainstream media. Thanks for joining us. WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the fun that we have, past, present, or future. Mayhem out! Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.